What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day number 47 of Autodesk Fusion. I got something really interesting today, and this has caused me a lot of frustration, but I was able to figure it out. So I have been able to get a gear system up and running, including uh, a, large a large gear, a small gear, and then trying to model kind of like a rack and pinion system just to get that rotational motion into a linear motion. I also was able to do this with uh, triangular gear shaped teeth. And let's go ahead and just model this one real quick, if it'll let me. I am asking Fusion to do a lot of things right now. And so I was able to get Fusion to uh, do a sawtooth gear system as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to use the same approach I did for both of them. However, I'm going to do the sawtooth gear pattern just because I'm able to do it a little more quickly than I was with the rounded off gears. There's a lot of math involved with looking at how to the spacing of these gears and pitches and things like this. I kind of eyeballed it and it worked out totally fine. There's a little bit of odd collision in the system, um, but it worked nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create my small gear. I'm going to have this dimension to 50 millimeters and I'm going to create, I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to create a triangle. Now here's how I did this. I just created a line that was symmetric, the best I could make it, and then um, kind of focusing on looking at this grid pattern behind it. So I did one grid over, one grid up. Um, that allowed me to create just a nice uniform triangle point. This part right here is what I suggest if you want to make a high tensile or high performance. This is the part right here you need to put the most amount of energy and effort into. Everything from here on out is just kind of procedure, but getting this first tooth is kind of the most important. So I'm going to inspect this, and I'm going to see the distance right here is a little over 10 millimeters. And so I'm going to go ahead and close on that. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to create um, a loop of this. So with this sawtooth pattern, I'm able to do just to shove as many teeth in there as I can as possible. And what I found out with a 50 millimeter diameter, I'm able to get... Uh, about 15 in there without them overlapping. And here's where kind of your math comes to larger play because if y'all were to try to shove in a 16th one in here, you get some overlap and that's going to create a lot of problems when I try to extrude this. So I'm going to create one less. I know there's a little bit of gap, but I actually think that's going to be okay. So what I've got is I've got one gear and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create my center diameter for my axle to kind of run through. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish sketch there and we're extrude this. I'm going to highlight everything and then I'm going to deselect my center. That way I still have my axle going through uh, here soon and go back 40 millimeters. And every time I do a new extrusion, I'm going to click on new component. That way, when I go and do my constraints here later on down the road, I don't have to worry about bodies and components and run into that. So we're going to call this our 15 tooth gear. Now, how do I then take this triangle pattern and then repeat it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to pick this plane. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard and I'm going to project that exact tooth geometry. I'm going to deselect projection link because I'm actually going to do some edits with this. I'm going to click OK. Now this gear starts to get in my way, and so I'm going to deselect it and make it unactive so I can see what I'm doing here easily. So I know my first one was 50, so let's make a 100, not a 10. I guess I'm going to need 10 later. Let's make a 100 millimeter gear, and I have my uh, geometry right here, which I'm going to manipulate. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard, and I'm going to move these two triangles right on up. Now I'm going to click OK. Now here's where you can run into a little bit of a problem is because you can see it's not perfectly aligned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit D on my keyboard and I'm going to keep these dimensions as true. That way when I start to do my constraints, I know it won't change the length of those teeth. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the coincident constraint. 
we're going to hit the end of this to be coincident with that and the end of this to be coincident with that. And what that did um, was it would, actually I didn't like that, so let's just kind of um, see if I can fix this a little bit. Let's modify this. Let's move these two up just a hair bit more. Um, so it's 0 0.25. And that looks okay. I'm going to call that done. My geometry is looking good. If I were to trim this out, oh, I'm going to make sure everything is nice and good. Let's see if this works. I'm trying new stuff here, folks. And we're trying to push the limits of what Fusion can do. Let's see if we can get away with it. So now what I'm going to do is under this sketch. Why am I outside of the sketch? Let's go back into the sketch and edit it. There we go. Trim key. Oh, there we go. I did get away with it. Somehow I got out of the sketch. Sorry about that. I think I hit enter on my keyboard. So let's do a circular pattern. The same thing we did earlier. Let's do a circular pattern of that geometry. And the center point will be the center of my circle. Oh, let's try that again. Center point, center of the circle. And I think I can do this, I think, 31 times before I get an overlap. And we really don't want an overlap. So I'm zooming here nice and full. And you see we have this overlap right here. That is going to create a ton of problems as far as trying to extrude. And just so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bump it down one. And see if I can get away with that. And did I? I think I did. So let's go ahead and finish sketch. Let's extrude this piece on out. So I'm going to extrude this whole thing, except for that center circle. New component. Click OK. And we're going to call this our 30. I think I go with 30 tooth gear. We're going to hit move. We're going to move this off to the side because I know when I make my 15 tooth gear active, it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what we've done so far is using the same tooth where you were able to um, kind of make a large tiered gooth. Uh, uh, large gear tooth gear and a smaller tooth gear now how can we take this and make a kind of rack and pinion system so it's going to be the same thing we're going to create a sketch we're going to go back to um, our original gear here i'm going to hit project on the keyboard and i want to do just those two lines not the whole thing and then click ok i'm going to make my other gears disappear and then now let's do some uh, of our other magic. Let's see if it'll get away with this. So uh, you can create the rack and pinion system as long as you want it to be. And so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a rectangle. And then what I'm gonna do now is hit rectangular pattern. And that will take these two geometries, repeat it as many times as you want. Um, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna bump it up until I get an overlap. And then we really don't like an overlap. However, I think I'm going to be able to get away with this one. Let's see if it will. Hit OK, and I sure did get away with it. Let's go ahead and finish sketch. Extrude this out. Let's bring this out 40, like we've done the other ones, and make it a new body, or sorry, new component. All righty. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We made a 15th tooth, a 30 tooth, and a rack, all using the same geometry of that tooth. Now there is ways in there you can make this sure that all this perfectly lines up and actually uses the same geometry. You can see actually this top gear and that one match up perfectly. Looks beautiful. Alrighty guys, on the next video I'm going to show you how I went from this to making this work. And all it does is take me some constraints and a little bit of magic, but um, we're going to save that for the next video. All right, you guys, if you have any questions about making the gears or how to do gears well, shoot me uh, a comment. But until then, I'll see you on the next video.